right. I'd like to call this meeting to order for the Sacramento County Planning Commission on December 28, 2020. Um, we can start with a, a roll call. Yes, Commissioner Hom. Here. Commissioner Martinson. Commissioner Martinson. If she's there, we'll come back to her. Commissioner Commissioner Rathel. Here. Commissioner uh, Chair Shelby. Here. And Commissioner Tatishi. Here. And again, Commissioner Martinson. I do see her on board. Sometimes she does call in from another line. So let me know if you'd like me to go to continue. Yes, can we uh, start the opening statement? Okay, in compliance with directives of the County, State, and Center for Disease Control and Prevention, this meeting is live stream and closed to the public. Temporary procedures are subject to change pursuant to guidelines related to social distancing and minimizing person-to-person -person contact. To make a verbal comment at today's meeting, dial 916-875-2500 and follow the prompts to be placed in queue for a specific agenda item or off-agenda matter. When the chair opens public comment for a specific agenda item or off-agenda matter, callers will be transferred from the queue into the meeting to make a verbal comment. Written comments are always accepted. Send your email comment to board clerk at sacccounty.net and your comment will be routed to the board and filed in the record. And we ask that you please speak from a handset or headset, mute your devices when not speaking to minimize background noise, announce your name when speaking on an agenda item so all participants and listeners are aware who has the floor. And when the chair calls for a motion and a second, please announce your name prior to making the motion or second. And then I will take a voice vote and confirm the results of the vote. Okay, and let's uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance now. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Hi, this is Kara. Hi. I'm here. I'm sorry. I was having um, audio issues, but um, uh, I'm back on. Perfect. Perfect. All right, can you call up the first item on the agenda? Yes, sir. Should I should I go ahead and swear in the um, any potential? Uh... Yes, let's do that. All the, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Applicant. Perfect. Thank you. And this is for the applicants. So if you wish to address the commission, um, we ask that you um, please be ready to be sworn in. Please raise your right hand, and the appropriate response is I do. Do you swear? that the testimony you're about to give this commission is the truth, so help you God. If you do not swear, do you so affirm? I do. Okay, thank you. Item number one is a tentative parcel map, special development permit and design review located at Zero River Road in the Delta community and the environmental documentation is exempt. Good evening, everyone. This is Desiree Fox confirming you guys can hear me okay? Yes. Awesome. Um, is this the presentation that's pulled up? Yes, we can see it. Are we, we're doing the presentation from the PDF, correct? Yes, Desiree, we're doing the presentation from what you provided us. Gotcha. Um, I will be presenting on, on Project PLMP 2020-00041, which is Mainland U Tentative Parcel Map. Next slide. The subject parcel is an agricultural lot located along Highway 160, just across from the Sacramento River in the Delta community. The project request is for a tentative parcel map, special development permit, and design review. Next slide. 
The tentative parcel map requests to subdivide the 46.91 acre parcel into two lots. Proposed parcel one will result in 41.91 acres and proposed parcel two would result in five acres. The special development permit addresses the deviation from the minimum parcel size for proposed parcel two and a deviation from the minimum lot width for proposed parcel two in the Ag 40 zone. Lastly, the project consists of a design review to determine compliance with the countywide design guidelines. Next slide. The zoning classification for the parcel is Act 40, which requires a minimum parcel size of 40 acres. And as previously mentioned, the current parcel size is 46.91 acres. The general plan designation for the parcel is Act Crop. And our zoning code has general plan policy Ag 7, which requires a minimum parcel size of 40 acres for sites with class 1 and class 2 soil classifications. And the parcel is not encumbered by a Williamson Act contract. There was a previously active Williamson Act contract, but it has since expired. Next slide. On your screen, you see the tentative parcel map for the project request. Proposed parcel 1 is the larger lot that will maintain the agricultural land use. Currently, the site is developed with an orchard. Proposed parcel two is a smaller lot that's carved out in the, the middle of the current parcel and will have a parcel size of five acres and is intended to be developed with a single family residence and serve as a home site parcel. The both parcels will be accessed by the driveway, which is uh, takes access off of Highway 150. Next slide. It's important to note that if the tentative parcel map is approved, the conveyance of development rights will be required on the larger 40 acre parcel, which is proposed parcel one. The purpose of this is to preclude further residential development and conversion of agricultural land, as proposed parcel two will function as a home site parcel and is intended to be developed with a single family resident. Next slide. The Delta CMAC met on June 10th and after a brief discussion recommended approval of the proposed project. The DRAC met on July 9th and um, once again, a very brief discussion and ultimately recommended the project be found in compliance with countywide design guidelines. Next slide. Staff's recommendation is to recognize the exempt status of the request under the applicable section of CEQA, approve the tentative parcel map, approve the special development permit and find the project in substantial compliance with the countywide design guidelines subject to the findings and conditions that are listed as a, in attachment two of the staff report next slide that concludes staff's presentation i'm available to answer any planning related questions and the applicant is on the line to answer any questions that might be better suited for their team thank you uh, do we have any questions for uh, from the commissioners from, for staff right now? Nope, I'm good. Okay. If we don't have any, then we can uh, bring the applicant forward. We have the applicant. Yeah, the applicant. Do we have the applicant? Yes, I'm here. Oh, sorry, I can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you agree with all the, uh, the, the conditions of approval? Yes. That's my question I have for you. I don't think anyone else have any questions for the applicant. If not, then um, uh, we don't have any public comments, right? Um, yes, for the record, there are no public comments. That's correct. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So close public comment, and we can. Um, Entertain a motion from uh, commissioners. I'm happy to have a staff recommendation. This is Kara. All right, I'll second that. This is, this is James. Perfect. Commissioner Hong. Yes. Commissioner Martinson. Yes. Commissioner Rayfield. Yes. Commissioner Shelby. Yes. And Commissioner Tatishi. 
Yes. And the motion passes. All right. For item number two, it's a community plan amendment, zoning ordinance amendment, rezone, a large lot tentative subdivision map, small lot subdivision map, exception, and a design review located approximately 700 feet north of Florin Road and west of South Watt Avenue in the South Sacramento community, and the environmental dock as an addendum to prior environmental impact report. All right, good evening, commissioners. My name is Emma Patton. Can you all hear me all right? Yep, we can hear you. Great, thank you. So I will be presenting the Florin Vineyards 1 and 2 project for you this evening. Next slide, please. This project is located within the Florin Vineyard Gap Community Plan Area. The Florin Vineyards 1 and 2 project is shown here on this map in red. There's another property at 7001 South Watt Avenue, shown in blue. While all of the requested entitlements apply to the Florin Vineyards 1 and 2 property, only one of the requested entitlements this evening uh, will apply to the 7001 South Watt Avenue property. I'll go into a little further detail to explain this distinction later in my presentation. As an aside, I will note that there are a number of pending residential mapping projects, which the Planning Commission will hear in the future within close vicinity to this project, including the Southeast Watt Tentative Subdivision map to the east, which is in for a map extension, and the Tokay Crossing Tentative Subdivision map to the northeast, which will be considered uh, with additional entitlements for final approval by the board. Next slide, please. It's important to provide some background for this project before we go into further detail uh, related to the entitlements being requested. In 2011, the board approved the Florin Vineyards 1 project. Uh, the boundary for the Florin Vineyards 1 project is shown here in green on this exhibit. Due to um, some drainage and Associated Army Corps of Engineers permitting, the approved Florin Vineyards 1 tentative subdivision map required revisions. Next slide, please. So in 2015, planning staff approved a substantial compliance determination for the Florin Vineyards 1 project, which resulted in relotting of the subdivision, a revised circulation system, incorporation of a drainage ditch through the center of the site, and the re relocation of the park. So what you see here in orange is where the park site, which had a recreation zoning, was previously located. Uh, now that that park was no longer located there, there was a desire to add residential lots in its place. However, this would require a rezone to a resid residential designation to allow uh, these lots to be mapped. Next slide, please. When the Florin Vineyards 1 and 2 application uh, was originally submitted to us, uh, it only included these blue and orange portions. So uh, the purpose of the orange portion um, was, as I described, to rezone that recreation area that was previously paying for a park in the Florin Vineyards 1 portion of the project and uh, to map that portion. And the blue portion, uh, which was named Florin Vineyards 2, uh, essentially was an extension of the residential subdivision and had some additional entitlements associated with it. Planning staff identified a number of concerns with this approach, which would result in some implementation challenges in the future, including requirements for future boundary line adjustments and lots which may be subject to multiple sets of conditions. And so we request that the applicant uh, combine the maps for ease of future implementation. Next slide, please. So the applicant agreed to uh, combine those maps. Um, and so now today we have this combined Florin Vineyards 1 and 2 tentative subdivision map as shown here. Next slide, please. There are a number of entitlement requests for this project, including community plan amendments, a rezone, a large lot subdivision map, a small lot subdivision map, exceptions to Title 22 of County Code, and a design review. Next slide, please. Um, I will go into further detail for each of these requests, but I will start 
uh, by further detailing the zoning ordinance amendment being requested, which affects both the Florin Vineyards 1 and 2 site and the 7001 South Watt Avenue property. Next slide, please. So again, just as a reminder, the 7001 South Watt Avenue property is shown here in blue, and uh, what was the Florin Vineyards uh, 1 project site is shown here in, in orange. The zoning ordinance amendment proposes to amend the original rezoned ordinance for Florin Vineyards 1. Um, it will remove the Florin Vineyards 1 parcels from the ordinance, thereby reverting them to their pre-approval zone of A10. And then the 7001 South Watt Avenue property, um, it was actually included in the Florin Vineyards 1 rezone originally as it was intended to be dedicated to comply with the Florin Vineyards 1 affordable housing obligation. Under the current affordable housing obligation, the Florin Vineyards project is no longer required to dedicate property to meet the affordable housing obligation, and instead developers may choose to pay in lieu fees. So while the Florin Vineyards 1 and 2 project expects to pay in lieu fees to comply with the affordable housing ordinance, the 7001 South Law Avenue property uh, will retain its RD20 zoning as approved with the 2011 zoning ordinance. However, this amendment proposes revised conditions uh, for that property, which omit a number of unnecessary conditions from the ordinance. Again, this is the only entitlement for the 7001 South Watt Avenue property. And Glenn Sorensen, um, owner representative, has joined us this evening and may be available for questions or comments following my presentation. Next slide, please. Thank you. So as the zoning ordinance amendment will revert the zoning to A10, new residential zoning must be established as provided for the Florin Vineyards 1 and 2 combined site. The so new rezone conditions will be established for the entire site for the proposed rezone ordinance. The Florin Vineyards 1 and 2 site is located within two community plan areas, the South Sacramento Community Plan and the Florin Vineyard Gap Community Plan. And so there is also a request to amend each of these community plans to allow density as proposed on the tentative subdivision map. Next slide, please. There is a large lot map proposed for the purposes of phasing and financing. Next slide, please. The small lot tentative subdivision map, as shown here, proposes to divide 76.4 acres into 285 residential lots in the RD5 and RD7 zones, along with a four acre park. There'll be some open space ditch lots, a channel lot, which runs along uh, the north of the property, drainage and detention lots, landscape lots, and a lot for the potential future expansion of the detention basin. Next slide, please. The map includes a number of requests for exceptions to county improvement standards. Uh, these are requests to deviate from the standard street sections as provided in the county improvement standards in the Florin Vineyard Gap Community Plan. Uh, each of these exceptions is further detailed in the staff report, and DOT and SIPs have reviewed these requests and they provide their support for allowing these exceptions. Next slide, please. Primary access to the Florin Vineyards 1 and 2 project is from South Watt Avenue and Gardner Avenue. The project requires a signalized intersection at the corner of South Watt Avenue and A Drive and Gardner Avenue and Florin Road. Gardner Avenue and Florin Road, shown in orange and red on this exhibit, will both feature separated sidewalks within a landscape corridor. In addition, A Drive, which connects Gardner Avenue and South Watt Avenue, will also feature a separated sidewalk within a landscape corridor. All of the remaining streets, uh, shown in yellow, will include attached sidewalks, with the exception of a portion of a roadway um, adjacent to the park site, shown in blue, which will include a separated sidewalk. Um, on the call this evening, we do have Matt Darrow, a principal civil engineer with DOT, um, who may be available for any transportation-related questions. Next slide, please. A shed-wide drainage plan was prepared with the project, uh, which not only encompasses this project, but other projects in the region. Drainage facilities, as shown on this exhibit, um, include basin to the west, a drainage ditch traveling through the site, and a channel to the north. 
the channel to the north travels through two properties, uh, which are not a part of the project. Property owners have been informed of the project and are in coordination with the developer for future dedication of easements to allow the drainage facilities. DWR staff is in attendance this evening as well and may be available to answer any further drainage related questions. Next slide, please. This project was considered by the Design Review Advisory Committee, who recommended that the project be found in compliance with the design guidelines. The project was also heard by the South Sacramento CPAC, who recommended approval of the proposed project. Additionally, the Vineyard CPAC reviewed this project as a bordering community and provided their support for the project. So based on these recommendations and the project's consistency with the general plan policies and the community plan policies, staff is also recommending approval of this request. Next slide, please. The hearing authority, a final hearing authority rather, for this project is the, the Board of Supervisors. So staff is recommending the Planning Commission recommend approval of the entitlements as provided in the report to the board. That concludes my presentation. Um, as I mentioned, the applicant team for the Farm Vineyards 1 and 2 project, the owner representative for the 7001 Southwell Avenue property, um, and our environmental analyst, Julie Newton, and I are all available. All right, thank you. Um, do we have any questions for staff? This is Kara. I have a couple questions um, about the drainage, and I don't know um, if that's for DWR staff or planning staff, but um, my question is about the easement, the required easement on other parcels not associated with this project. If they're, um, and I think I remember reading in the staff report that if easements can't be obtained, the county may have to use eminent domain. I'm just curious about sort of the status of those conversations, where they are, and and sort of what the probability of, of that latter tool might be. Yeah, I'll pass that question on to uh, Michael Johnson from DWR and his staff to respond. Great, thank you. Any other questions for staff? If not, we can bring the applicant forward. Hello, this is Bruce Walters. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, this is Bruce Walters, Walters Land Planning, representing Evergreen Communities, project applicant. Uh, also here tonight is Rick Langdon. Uh, on the project team, uh, there may, may be other members um, here that I don't recognize on the list, but um, here to say that this has been a, a fairly arduous process getting this project through a number of issues, particularly drainage, but uh, the applicant team along with consultants has worked hard with staff uh, to resolve these issues and we're here tonight to uh, present the, the project. Uh, we are in agreement with the 136 conditions of approval. Um, here to answer any questions. If there are any uh, public comments, would appreciate the op opportunity to respond to them afterwards. I know Commissioner Martin seems like you had a question, the applicant. Well, I, my question was about sort of the the drainage issue, and I didn't know if DWR staff was on the line or if planning staff was just going to pass that question along and they would respond afterwards. It wasn't necessarily, unless the applicant can answer that question. So Commissioner Martinson, this is Chris Pahuli, uh, Principal Planner. Um, we do have um, Michael Johnson from uh, Department of Water Resources on the line and he will be able to uh, answer questions about drainage. Um, if you'd like, he can uh, answer those questions now. Yeah, can we do it right now then, Chris? Um, sure. Absolutely, Michael, are you on, on and able to start yeah. addressing? Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Anne. This is Mike Johnson with Water Resources. Uh, we have been in communication, as well as the developers, have been in communication with the two property owners, um, Mrs. Amstutz, who is in the property farthest west, and Mr. Sargent, who owns the property farthest east. 
Uh, the last communication I had with Mr. Mrs. Amstutz is that she uh, understands what's being asked, that uh, a certain portion of her property on the north side needs to be used for a drainage ditch or drainage pipes. And she indicated she's willing to work with the developers to um, dedicate that property. Uh, I got the same response from uh, um, somebody representing Mr. Sargent that they're looking to work with uh, developers and uh, the county on dedicating that property uh, channel alignment to. Okay, great. Sounds like um, we won't have to pull that eminent domain here then. Yeah, that, that assumes that uh, uh, some accommodation can be made between the developer and the and the owners. But the indications are they're willing to to work with the developers. Okay, great, thank you. Right. Any other questions for the applicant? All right. Um, do we have any public comments on on this item? There are no public comments um, at this time. Okay, so we'll close the public comment, and we can uh, entertain a motion. This is Commissioner Tatishi. I'll move to approve staff recommendation. Well, second, Chair. Okay, uh, Commissioner Hallam. Yes. Commissioner Martinson. Yes. Commissioner Rachel. Yes. And Chair Shelby. Yes. And Commissioner Jatishi. Yes. And the motion passes. Item number three is the planning director's report. So commissioners, this is Chris Pahuli once again. Uh, just wanted to provide a, a couple of uh, quick updates uh, for some items that were recently heard by the um, Planning Commission and, and went on to the Board of Supervisors and were heard um, on December 16th. Uh, those two items which were um, adopted by the Board, one was a, uh, a zoning ordinance uh, uh, amendment to the zoning code related to the accessory dwelling units uh, standards. The, that was a package that was before the uh, Planning Commission a few months ago. Uh, that was adopted by the board, making some pretty significant changes to uh, the um, uh, accessory dwelling unit provisions in the code and, and bringing them largely consistent, or I'm sorry, bringing them consistent with state law, but also providing for some uh, additional provisions. And then uh, secondly, the board also um, adopted the general plan amendment to adopt the uh, air districts, uh, thresholds of significance uh, uh, for GHG or greenhouse gas emissions uh, for uh, environmental documents. That was also, um, as I mentioned, approved by the board. And then should also um, mention that at that meeting, the board also uh, adopted a resolution declaring a climate emergency uh, and um, also indicating with that resolution uh, that uh, action be taken to achieve carbon neutrality by 2030. So there's a number of uh, efforts that the uh, that the county is moving forward with um, to uh, support that action, including um, work on the climate action plan, which will be um, uh, you'll be hearing more about in the uh, early parts of 2020. <clears throat> excuse me, early parts of 2021. So. Wanted to provide you with that update and then also wanted to make note, I know it's the next agenda topic, but in terms of scheduling matters, um, also wanted to make note uh, that we are um, working on putting items together for the January 11th meeting and um, we have a number of items that are going to be going that evening and we'll be working with uh, uh, Chair Shelby to uh, put together a game plan for that meeting given the number of items that need to be heard. So that's the update that I have for you this evening. I think it's the last agenda item, is that correct? Okay, 
Yes, well, item number four is miscellaneous scheduling matters. I think you've covered that too. Okay, and then the last item, number five, is public comments, and there are no public comments at this time. Yeah, and then we can adjourn the meeting. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.